Hey everyone, Chuck May here and welcome back to another simulation here on Foot Manager 2019. Today we're looking at another option as the next Manchester United manager and this is one that's been uh, touted around quite a bit of the last few days and that is Marco Rose. And don't really know much about this guy to be honest with you, he's only been managing by the looks of it since 2012 when he took over LOK Leipzig, not sure who that is. Uh, but then in 2013 went to Red Bull Salzburg um, in Austria. So it's a, it's a pretty interesting one. Again, it's not a very experienced manager. Um, I, I can understand probably with this working with youngsters of 17. Uh, that might be one of the reasons why we're looking at it. Man motivating and uh, man management and motivation, which are two skills that I think are so important, um, as we found out with Mourinho, that he really lacked. I think they're two very, very important skills. But it's going to be interesting to see how this one pans out. Like I said, not a lot of experience, but I dare say quite a bit of potential. So Without further ado, let's get straight to the end of the first season and see just how Marco Rose got on. And here we go to the end of season one. And Marco Rose has finished second in the league, finished only two points behind Manchester City, one point ahead of Liverpool and four points ahead of Spurs. So um, quite convincingly, I think nine points in the top four, which is nice. Um, but only two points away from Man City is very, very good. And also... The oh no, there's um. What am I looking? What am I looking at? Pretty good goal difference, not terrible, and um, pretty average for that level. A lot of draws, the least amount of losses in the league, but 11 draws wasn't great. Uh, let's have a look then at transfer wise. Um. Oh, it's spoilers there for this season already. Uh, so Kieran Tierney from Celtic, good deal that one. Kevin Umbabu from Young Boys. Don't really know much about this guy, to be honest with you, but it looks like a decent player. Rafinha from Barcelona. That's a very good deal, that is. I mean, he's worth 37, and they paid 11 for him. That's a really, really good deal. Marco Rog from Napoli. 23 years old. And Mark Bunn on a free transfer. Oh, interesting. So one thing I do notice, these, um, these four players are all quite young, to be honest. So Rafinha being the older one at 26. So it's quite a young set of transfers, obviously looking to build for the future, which I think is what a main manager needs to do. Right, what went out though? Ashley Young for 2.6 million, fine. Andres Pereira for 4.4, disappointing, but I think it's probably likely. Damian to Leicester for 3.8. Fellaini to Porto for 11.5. Lee Grant went out. One matter for 14 million, so... Did have quite a bit of a clear out of quite a bit of the, the uh, I wouldn't say Deadwood as such, but quite a lot of the players that are no longer needed by the club. So pretty interesting. Um, who did him well this year then? I'm too far ahead. I'm not going to see it, am I? Boom. I can't see it. Okay. Well, we'll have to ignore that for now then. Um, so yeah, it's second in the league. We'll have a look at the rest of the fixtures then. See how he got on the rest of the competitions. Where I schedule... I've gone too far, haven't I? There we go. So into the Champions League group stages. So they're in Group D. Why is it not showing us the bloody stuff? Um, Champions League. What is all this stuff? Why is there no... What is going on? Oh, you know, have I... What have I done here? Where's the freaking group stages gone? Are they in best place, second... What is going on? Champions League, Group D. It's because I'm in this year's, I don't know, I want to be in last year's. Oh, I've really messed this video up already, I do apologise. Let's just look through this, that's probably the easiest way. So they were got through Group D. Uh, they got knocked out of the EFL Cup. Uh, quarter final uh, FA Cup they got through they got through they got they got beaten in the Champions League and then they lost on penalties yeah and lost the penalties on Napoli lost in the FA Cup six round against Wolves as well but that was a strong finish look at this in the league so they did not lose in the league since Burnley which was a 2-1 loss on the 29th of December they didn't lose another game in the Premiership. They went on to win or draw every single game. 
That uh, April is what did it to him, though. Four draws in April. How many games there were, though? 3rd, 6th, 13th, 17th, 20th, 24th, 27th. That was a tough time for him. That was, no matter there was so many draws, they must have been playing a lot of um, weakened squads to try and get through that. But either way, uh, let us move on to the next season and see how Marco Rose does in season number two. Right then, at the end of season two, and once again, Manchester United were only two points shy of the Premiership. This time, they're finishing in third place behind Spurs, who won it, crazily enough, and Liverpool, who were in second place. So getting ahead of Man City this season, that's interesting. Right, transfer-wise, we want to go here. Right, so they brought in Milinkovic Savage, which is something that nearly every single main manager seems to do. 76 million. I think he's like the highest potential player in the game. He's absolutely amazing. Look at those stats. Absolutely crazy. And only 25 years old as well. Benjamin Pavard, who made a big name for himself at the World Cup. A couple of really, really good performances. Now joins Manchester United in a deal worth £62 million. Left back then, Alex Tells as well from Porto. is not a bad signing at all. And Viktor Kovalenko brought in quite a bit on FIFA last year, the young Ukrainian. Uh, Manor Solomon, no idea who that is to be honest with you, but again, it's another young player they brought in, which is a an interesting one. And Andrea Bellotti, okay. So he's gone pretty all out with some of these transfers, I must say. They spent a lot of money then. They spent um, doesn't say how much they spent to get all together for some reason, but. That is 130, 150, say 170. It's about 230, 240 million they spent. They brought in 87 with a set of Matic for 26, Rojo for 13, Luke Shaw for 18, Fred for 25, Antonio Valencia left as well. Pretty interesting once again. So Chris Smalling left on a free transfer as well. So again, finished nearly two points away from the what am I trying to say Premiership right so they won the Community Shield and they lost in the EFL Cup again pretty early on Champions League group stage in D again looks like they did qualify yes they did um, they qualified in the FA Cup third round in the fourth round they drew and then they had a replay in which they won in the Champions League, they were knocked out by Real Madrid. Um, FA Cup-wise, Southampton were beaten. Crystal Palace were beaten. Man City were beaten. And they lost 1-0 to Liverpool in the final. So Liverpool beat them in the league. And they also beat them in the FA Cup. So still, Marco Rose hasn't won anything. But he's been given two seasons. And he's only been within the Premiership by two points in both those seasons. So not bad at all. And like I said, I think he's definitely a fuller potential manager. So it's just going to keep getting closer and closer, hopefully. So hopefully next season will be the one where he finally gets his reward. So let's get to the end of season number three and see how Marco Rose does. And he's freaking well done it. End of season three and Marco Rose wins the Premiership by three clear points. Still seven losses though, which is pretty big. But only three draws, 28 victories. Liverpool finishing second, three points behind. Spurs finishing six points behind in third. Arsenal still in that fourth place on 80. Man City only getting fifth with 77. Chelsea getting sixth with 72. And Southampton win the best of the rest. Weird. Um, but yeah, what a win that is. I mean, United winning the Premiership. Right into the transfers then. We will head to the history. And boom, we'll go back one. Right, so in this season, they purchased Declan Rice. That's a pretty big deal. 22-year-old English player and played a few games this season. They paid £35 million for him. James Rodriguez was purchased as well. Um, interesting deal. Still not too old, is he? £54 million for a 29-year-old, though. It's a bit of a up-and-down idea. Richard Afori. Who's, they're trying to sell for 2 million now, so he kind of been. They'd have paid 425k for him, so you can't moan too much. Probably just needed that backup goalkeeper for a season, didn't they, really? Nikola Milenkovic. Now, this is interesting because this is someone we're actually linked to in real life in January, so that could be very interesting. Good young centre back. Um, played only four games last season for us, but 26 million pound he cost. 
and Orbelin Ponida. No idea who that is. Again, Mexican player. Came directly from Mexico in a deal worth 12 million, but he's now worth 36 and a half million. So looks like it was a pretty good deal for Man United there, really. Sales wise, then, they got 38 million for Jesse Lingard to Chelsea. Pereira left Phil Jones to Marseille. Sergio Romero leaving to Dynamo Kiev as well. So a big season, winning the Premiership, some big deals as well. And we want to go back a season. Right, so uh, so they got to the semi-finals of the International Champions Cup. Right, so in the Champions League they had PSG, Spartak, Moscow and Sporting. Looks like they did pretty well. Um, EFL Cup, they finally got through with their first round of the EFL Cup. It's pretty useful, isn't it? Champions League, they got through. EFL Cup quarterfinals, they won as well. EFL Cup semi-finals, they lost. But did they lose? They didn't, they won. And then they went on to win the EFL Cup. So not only win the Premiership this year, they won the League Cup as well. Um, FA Cup then, they beat Burton Albion. Um, Champions League, is that? No, Champions League is down here. They got Benfica, beat Benfica. Got knocked out of the FA Cup in the sixth round by Chelsea. Um, beating Liverpool. Oh, this could be good. This could be Champions League. Oh, so he nearly had an amazing season, Marco Rose. Won the Premiership, won the League Cup, and was losing, losing? Second place in the European Champions League final. Wow. That was a... Uh, could have been a really big one, that one. That could have been a massive, massive season. But it could be a massive season for him and help him push on further forward. Let's give him another season and see if he can defend his Premiership, maybe go one step further in the Champions League. Yep, they defended it. 84 points was again enough to win them the Premiership, but eight games lost. It's pretty crazy, really, isn't it? That's a lot of games to lose and still go on to win the Premiership, but they did win it by three points. I think that just shows how much the Premiership is starting to close up uh, in regard to quality. Um, it, it's a really good... I can't believe they won it two years in a row. Marco Rose did a fantastic, fantastic job. All right, transfer history. All right, Matthias Delete, 114 million they paid for this guy. And obviously it was worth it because he had a fantastic season. Um, 31 games, three goals in the centre-back position, 22 years old. Going to really just hold that back line down for an incredibly long time, really. Uh, also, Thiago Almeida, Argentinian from Velez, played 28 games last season. So obviously he was given a lot of opportunities for the 21-year-old. Cost 8.25 million, that deal did. And he's now worth 29. That seems like an absolute steal, doesn't it? Filip Benkovic, Croatian centre-back from Leicester. That's an interesting one, but he does have fantastic stats, to be honest with you. He looks like he might be more of a backup, only playing nine games last season. 49 million and the last one is Lara Mendy 14.25 million for the 32 year old Spanish defensive midfielder I dare say he was more of a bit of a cover only playing 11 games but still it's if you can get the right move you get the right move no one really left I think Fosu meant to the only person leaving for money and he went to West Ham who went on to get relegated Scott McTominay went to Atlanta United and I wrote Sean Williams over to Barnsley head to the schedule Drop back a year. What else did they go for then? So, they won the Community Shield. Champions League, they had Sevilla, Bruges, Juventus. Looks like they did okay in that group. Won the EFL Cup second and third rounds. Lost in the quarterfinal to Everton though. Looks like they got through the Champions League. FA Cup, they won the third round against Cardiff. Won the fourth round against West Brom. Won the fifth round against Hull. Uh, they got Bayern Munich in the knockout stages, beat them, beat Arsenal in the sixth round of the FA Cup, beat Spurs in the semi-final. I think they lost to Benfica on away goals. No, they did not, because they went through to the semi-final playing PSG in a match they won. They lost 3-0 in the FA Cup final to Manchester City, but they won the Champions League, beating Inter Milan 2-0 in the finals, wow. That's a, another massive season. They almost won the treble, wow. If they'd beat Man City in the FA Cup final, they would have won the treble. That would have been massive. Premiership, Champions League, FA Cup. 
in this day and age, that would have been absolutely huge. Absolutely huge. Wow. Well done, Marco Rose. So far, you are proving to be the best manager Man United could have. Absolutely stunning results this guy is getting. That's two premierships in two years. And a Champions League now as well. Losing in the Champions League final last season and losing in the FA Cup final this year. Let's give another season and see if he can continue this run of winning trophies. So a bit of a drop this season, gone from winning the league for uh, two years in a row, sorry, now to finish him fourth on 80 points. Only 12 points behind the winners at Liverpool, but still that's a big drop from winning the league two years in a row. It was always going to be difficult to do it again, though, wasn't it? Man City finally getting back up the league into second. Arsenal in third. Man United finishing fourth, just a point ahead of Spurs. And then Chelsea in sixth. Right, let's have a look at transfer-wise what happened this season then. I can already see one of the big transfers as we just skipped through there. Uh, right, Thomas Lamar, £94 million from the French winger from Atletico Madrid. That was a big, big deal, that was, wasn't it? Big, big deal. Got 24 games and five goals last season. Andre Horta from Porto. The uh, Portuguese centre midfielder played 19 games, one goal last season. And he cost them at 33 million as well. Hampus Lundberg, young Swedish player, didn't play any games. I dare say he was playing in the uh, reserves and the under-23s. Um, looks like a pretty decent player actually for a 21-year-old. Only cost them 2 million, so why not? Jamal Lewis from Leicester is a real player. He's Northern Irish and he is a left wing back. Played 10 games and they've already sold him. Okay, and last but not least, they also signed Oystein Juvik, another youngster, this time Norwegian, nine caps and zero goals for the nation, and didn't play any games for May United last season. Was he on loan last season by the looks of it? He was, he was on loan at Lokomotiv Moscow where he played twice, which wasn't very good, was it really? But there we go. Um, Sales-wise, Ander Herrera leaving for 10 million, Lukaku leaves for 30 million to Real Madrid, um, Milenkovic, the defender, left for Watford. Eric Bailey to Barcelona. So some big outs this season. But that massive deal for Lamar didn't really help them as much as they hoped it would, did it really? Right then, let's have a look at what happened this season. As they won the UEFA Super Cup against Man City. That means Man City won the Europa League. That was pretty interesting. That means Man United won the Champions League. Man City won the Europa League. That's cool. Um, Champions League, they had Milan twice. In six days. That's a bit weird. Um, Zenit St. Petersburg, Valencia. So they won all the games bar one, which was just the um, the home game against Valencia. Oh, the away game against Valencia, which was 2 2. Um, what a weird season this was. How? I'm confused here. I'm really confused. This is a real weird setup. So they had the normal pre-seasons they had some games and they got down to December they had four friendly matches in December did they have a Christmas break maybe I've never seen this before in the game they had a, a friendly against Bayern a friendly against Palermo they had a De Gea testimonial against Atletico then we had the EFL quarter finals and the this was really weird this was right Colchester won the FA Cup anyway and the group stage H is down here is this to do with the World Cup, do you think? 22 to 23, that might be to do with the World Cup uh, in 2022, I believe. It looks that way, doesn't it? It's really messed up the whole season, though. Right, Brighton were beaten 2 1 in the FA Cup fourth round. Champions League knockout stage. It looks like they beat Napoli on away goals. Or did they? Oh, I don't know. They did, yeah, okay. FA Cup, they beat Cardiff on extra time, then beating Watford. Then they've knocked Spurs out of the Champions League. Three games against Spurs in the space of eight days. And they did not lose a single one, which is great. And then the semi-finals came along and they got absolutely hammered by Man City once again. Then lost to Man City in the league. Then lost the FA Cup final to Arsenal. So it really fell apart this year. I mean, Champions League semi-finals, not bad. Still finished top four, which is not bad. Lost in the FA Cup final, which is not bad. I wouldn't say you could sack him, but... I wouldn't necessarily say this was a successful season. 
So without further ado, let's get into the next season and see if he can turn things back around. And here we go then, very much the same thing. Real Liverpool winning the league, Man City second, Arsenal third, Man United fourth, this time 14 points away from the top. Spurs in fifth and Chelsea in sixth. Villa this time though, getting best of the rest in seventh place, which is pretty interesting. West Ham, Burnley and Wolves going down. Right, transfer wise, I've known one of the big ones, I've already seen his name. Um, it was... Latoro Martinez, somebody who always seems to go for massive amounts of money on this game. It looks like he was very, very good. £71 million, played 35, scored 19 last season. He cost £105 million. Next up then was Emmanuel Luengu, Congolese goalkeeper. Again, looks like Marco Rose is very happy to go with younger players. Of course, didn't actually play a game for them, but um, definitely looking to invest into the future. Next up, Philo Kerra, a German centre-back. Not really the German centre-back I would buy if I was going all out. Um, he is actually currently listed after one season of being there. 12 appearances, one goal for him. Uh, Ilya Martinuk, a Russian centre midfield and DM. He's got 14 caps at the age of 21, which is quite impressive. Played 11 games, scored one goal last season. Worth 34 million now, and they paid 31 for him, so he's definitely going up in ability. Ben Chilwell, that was an interesting one. Of course, they probably did need to have their English um, coefficient built up a little bit, maybe. 19 million. Kai Havertz, 76 million. 76 million, and he played 12 times. Bloody hell. Um, but it's a good deal. He's a very good player, only 25 years old. Uh, Carlo Lotica, a Croatian goalkeeper, looks fantastic actually, stat wise. Seven games, uh, sorry, five games, seven conceded. And Sebastian Driussi, Argentinian striker, 11 games, three goals. Definitely building the squad up a bit this season by the looks of it. £203 million in. Marcus Rashford, wow! Marcus Rashford, 100 and 48 million pounds for Marcus Rashford. 148 million. I've never seen a transfer that high before. He scored 20 goals in 25 games for PSG. That is huge. Um, Telves went to Juventus for 24.5. Jamal Lewis went to Brighton for 8.5. Declan Rice to Bournemouth for 18.25. And £4 million pounds for Dean Henderson. But that was the big one. Marcus Rashford, £148 million to PSG. That was huge. Right into the schedule then. Right, so a bit more of a coherent season this time, hopefully. So they've got PSG in the actual Champions League groups. There's no one. Did he score? No, he's got Mbappe as well. That's stupid, isn't it? But in that one. No, he didn't score in that one either. That was good for them. Um, so they've got PSG, Spartak and Leverkusen. Looks like they did do just about enough to go through. Um, EFL, third round. They lost to Bournemouth in the third round, so they're out of that already. Moving forward, Fulham in the FA Cup was a win. Rotherham in the FA Cup was a win. Ipswich in the FA Cup was a win. They knocked Bayern Munich out of the Champions League. Knocked Chelsea out of the FA Cup. Lost to Man City once again. Uh, beat Juventus 2-1 in the Champions League to get to the semi-finals again. And got knocked out by Man City. It's always Man City. So again, getting knocked out in the semi-finals of the Champions League. And getting knocked out in the semi-finals of the FA Cup. Man City has really had Marco Rose's number in this career mode. He's doing fantastically well, but every time he comes up against City, they just seem to knock him out of everything. But he's still going. He is still going. Let's give him another year and see how he goes on. This will be the end of Season 7. This will be a really good run for him. Well, well, well. It's all come full circle. Look who's back. The manager of Manchester United in 2025, Mr. Jose Mourinho. So Rose lasted just 12 seasons. When did Mourinho take over? He took over in 2024. So he took over mid-season by the looks of it 
Um, uh, doodaloo, doodaloo. Didn't say exactly when he came back, but yeah, it looks like he came back mid-season 2024. Very interesting indeed, wasn't it? Let's have a look at the league. Where did it all end up last season? What was the uh, what was the problems? Right, so the problem was... Well, again, it was a third in the um, Premiership. Ten points away, so that wasn't terrible, to be honest with you. Transfer-wise... They brought in Anthony Solis from Wolves. Again, it's a regen player. Looks pretty good, actually. Played 29 games, which is pretty good, actually, for 49 million. Harugi Tahai from St. Etienne, who is another regen player, young Frenchman. Played 28 games. Not bad. Tom Dupont, another regen player. Played 22 games, scored eight. And N'Golo Kante. That's not a bad deal for 20 million, is it? Played 34 games for them. Um, out 83 million, which was Kovalenko for 22 and Horta for 50. How much did they pay for Horta? They paid 33, so they made a profit on him in the end, which wasn't too bad. Um, yeah, poor Marco Rose. Uh, look at the schedule then as well. Let's just go right to the end because we don't know anything else. Uh, knocked out the Champions League in the first knockout stage. Uh, knocked out the FA Cup in the third round. And uh, they got through to the EF Cup final. They won the EFL Cup, which I believe was won by um, Jose Mourinho. I've just seen his name on the uh, when we looked at it a minute ago. So I can't see my keyboard. I'm just typing blankly. Marco Rose is currently the Germany manager. Now, did he leave himself? That would be the question that I would ask. It doesn't really... Does it, does it say milestones? Resigned as manager as manager. I was we didn't get sacked. He resigned in 2024 as a manager to take up the Germany role. Oh, okay. So he's gone to bigger and better things, apparently, in his mind. So there we go. That is the end of the simulation of Marco Rose as Man United manager. He lasted say six and a half seasons won the premiership twice won the champions league once got very far in the champions league in every single season um hopefully did some pretty cool stuff won a lot of different things and hopefully won a few hearts and a few minds again he's very much a young option not very experienced but he could be worth a risk as the new man united manager who knows then again with solskjaer doing so well is he worth more of a risk than Solskjaer? That's the big question that we'll have to ask. But there we go. That is Marco Rose done in this simulation. We've still got another eight managers, I think, for you to come through over the next um, few weeks. So keep an eye out for those. Um, but yeah, if you haven't done this video, please do hit a like. And of course, subscribe if you want to see some more. I have been Shabby Gamer. Thank you much for watching. And I'll see you very, very soon for our next simulation here on Footmagic 19. Bye.